On today's broadcast of Wisdom for Living, we're going to answer questions that will help you and will cause your soul to prosper. And this is also Ministry Friday, man. We're going to have a powerful time of entering into God's presence. The gifts of the Spirit are going to operate. Man, tune in and you're going to be blessed. Welcome to Wisdom for Living with Greg Moore. Join with Greg as he shares truth from the Word of God that will help you grow in wisdom and successfully navigate a balanced life with family, marriage, finances, and relationships. And now, here's Greg. Well, welcome to today's broadcast of Wisdom for Living. Man, I'm excited about uh, today because this is Ministry Friday. These Fridays we come together where we just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. I believe He's got a word for you. I believe He's got a word for uh, your family and friends. So maybe you want to text them or uh, uh, someone or pick up the phone and call them and let them know to tune into the broadcast because it's going to be a powerful time. We're, we're going to answer questions regarding uh, this series that we're in called A Prosperous Soul. Uh, then we're going to let the Spirit of God move. And boy, He's been moving powerfully on these Fridays. So uh, just just get ready. God's got God's got a word for you. God's got uh, you know He's a personal God. He He's got gifts for you. He's got help for you. He's got hope for you. Hallelujah. So I want to tell you funny. This is called the end. The, the end is near. So Reverend Boudreaux was the part-time pastor of the local Cajun Baptist Church, and Pastor Thibodeau was a minister of the Methodist Church just across the road. They were both standing by the road, pounding a, a, a sign into the ground that read, the end is near, turn yourself around before it be too late. As a car sped past them, the driver leaned out his window and yelled, you religious nuts? From the curve, they heard a screeching tires and a big splash. <laughs> Boudreaux turns to Thibodeau and asks, do you think maybe the sign should just say bridge out? <laughs> oh, that is funny. Uh, even if you're Cajun, that's funny. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so uh, we've had uh, a number of questions that uh, came in from a live Bible study that I taught uh, along these lines about a prosperous soul. And so I want to uh, share these questions. I believe it'll be Helpful. Uh, here's a question from Graham. If your heart is troubled over a serious family issue, what steps should you take to fix that? Um, well, you know, I, I would say to anyone who's, who's experienced uh, family trouble that, uh, you know, man, we'd, we'd like to fix it, wouldn't we? But John 14:1, uh, Jesus told us to let not our hearts be troubled. But so many times we let our hearts be troubled over things we can't control. And certainly, you know, there, there are some things we can do in a relationship where we contribute positively, where we can, instead of speaking, agreeing with what we see that family member do or say, uh, we can pray the opposite. We can pray Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, over them, you know, I just encourage you, you know, to pray scriptural prayers over your family members. And Ephesians one is one of those uh, one of those prayers that Paul prayed, and and just pray this uh, directly over your family member that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse seventeen, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling, then you put your relative's name there, that they may know the hope of his calling on their life and the riches of the glory of, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward them who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought when Christ raised him from the dead. And then you could also pray Ephesians 3, 14 uh, through 19 over your family member. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant my family member 
according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in my family member by faith, in their hearts by faith, that, that they would be rooted and grounded in love and may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the width and, and, and length and depth and height and to, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. They might be filled with the fullness of God. I, I just pray the word over them. Yeah, I, I just when 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 it looks like your family member is going a different direction, pray the word over them and speak the word of God over them, and get your cares over on the Lord, and then speak the word. Don't agree with what you see is going on in the situation. Agree and say what God is saying, and then you know I just I just uh, speak over them. Uh, that the, that the Lord is bringing them back into the kingdom. He's bringing them out of darkness into light. And 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, he's, he's bringing them out of darkness into light. And uh, then I just pray 1 Corinthians 3.5 that, that the Lord promised to send to give ministers to every man whereby they might believe. So I just speak that over my, over my family members. So, And I, I just encourage you to... Uh, to, to do that and not agree with what you see. Uh, don't say what you, what you see. Uh, say what, what you see in your heart. Don't say what you see that they're doing in the natural. Say what you see uh, that God is doing in their lives. And man, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see a lot better situation happen uh, or change happen in their lives. So here's, a, here's an interesting question. Uh, and it, and I believe it relates, uh, uh, at least indirectly to our, to a uh, prosperous soul is how is my prayer affected by the enemy, assuming that he hears and knows my prayers? Well, you know, that's a great question, but first of all, the enemy doesn't automatically hear you and know your prayers. He's not omnipresent. He can't interfere with your intimate time with the Lord uh, unless you allow him to. Psalm 100 verse 4 says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And then Psalm 8 verse 2 tells us that God ordained praise because of our enemies and that through our praise that the enemy would be silenced. And then Psalm 9 verse 3 says our enemies are turned back through our praise. And so really it's the contrary is that when we're praying and when we're worshiping God, it, it pushes, pushes the enemy back. Instead of him uh, assaulting our minds with confusion and, and discouragement and all that, then what, what we, we need to understand is if we'll uh, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, it silences the enemy. That's the Word of God. You guys go read that in Psalm 8, verse 2, and Psalm 9, verse 3. It silences the enemy, and it causes him to fall back. So, man, when I pray, man, the enemy, the enemy is trembling because if I pray the Word, and if you pray the Word, uh, man, his, his, his doom is assured. So, man, I don't, I don't let the enemy in, intimidate me. I intimidate him. So here's... a. Question from, from a young girl named Leah. She said, I'm, I'm in high school and I, I need help keeping my mind stayed on the Lord while being surrounded with all, by all the negativity. How, how do I keep my mind stayed on Him and not get involved in negative conversations and situations? Well, you know, that, that's, a, that's a great question. I think each of us has to deal with uh, and when, when we're in a secular or uh, just a, uh, an, an envir a work environment or something else, I mean, God, God has not called us to leave the world. He, he, just want, he doesn't want us to be of the world or part, part of the world in our, in our minds and our thinkings, he wants, uh, in, our, in our thoughts. He wants us to be, uh, have a biblical worldview. And so, first of all, you want to make your, the Word of God your primary focus. And, and you want to apply the word in that situation instead of 
focusing on the negativity and what people are saying. I mean, you could you could do this with the with your uh, when you're watching the news. I mean, you can listen to the bad news or the Ten Spies network where they've got a negative report. It's all, all you know everything. The world is falling. The sky is falling. Or you can you can focus on on God's word and and praise God that we've got a bright future and that there's hope in the, in the midst of the darkest hour of life man we've got we've got hope because because we have God we have a relationship with him and and man you know if the devil starts messing with your head about talking to you about negative things and in the future and all that stuff well then you just remind the devil of his of his past uh, that he that he had he known he wouldn't have crucified the Lord of, Lord of glory and then remind him of his future that one angel is going to grab him by the nap of the neck and put him in the lake of fire forever. Praise God, man! We we have the victory. We're not we're not we're not the uh, defeated ones. We're not the ones that are victims. We're not the ones that that are uh, the, being influenced by the world. We're influencers. We we are the ones that make a difference. Light overcomes darkness. But now. You need to know this, that 1 Corinthians 15, 33 tells us that, that uh, evil companions corrupt good morals. So if you're hanging around with your close friends um, in high school or at work, if your close inner circle is people that are living in the world, and you, then you're going to bring that on. It's going to influence you. But you need to, you need to choose your cl close inner friend, circle of friends uh, wisely. And uh, Proverbs 13, 20 said, he who walks with wise men shall be wise. So I'm going to, I'm going to choose my friends wisely. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, selective about that. So don't, don't, you know, don't hang out with the, with the, with the bad crowd. Uh, make, make the decision that you're going to, you're, you're going to, you're going to go with God and go with what he has for your life. So here's, uh, another, we'll, we'll take a couple more questions. Here's uh, Raj uh, that, that wrote, how does the fourth commandment about the Sabbath day of rest relate to us today? Well, Raj, it's a good question. Uh, we're not under the law, but the sa Sabbath is a rest that we have today, even, uh, even today because of Jesus. He's our Sabbath rest. And uh, Hebrews 4, 1 through 3 says, For we who have believed in Jesus, it's implied in Jesus, and his finished work on the cross, do enter into that rest. So if you believe in Jesus, and then you believe that, that he paid the price for all of our sins, all, of, all the maladies that we can face in life, man, there's rest in that. There's peace in that. And praise God. I mean, this is Ministry Friday, and and the Spirit of God is ministering right now peace to people. He's, he's ministering rest to people. Uh, the, the, the war is over. <laughs> the, the victory has been accomplished. Uh, Jesus has already paid the price. We, we, you know, we need to believe that. If we believe that, we're going to have a peace that passes all understanding. And there's someone that's really been dealing with stress in your life that's watching right now. And man, I'm just releasing peace to you. And that, that stress doesn't belong to you. Uh, that stress, Jesus uh, took on him. You know, when they put that crown of thorns on him, every, every part of his sacrifice meant something. When they put that crown of thorns on him, the Bible says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And man, if, you're, if, you're, if your heart and your mind is full of stress right now, uh, man, you need to you need to just believe in Jesus. Look, I'm, I know you believe that He died for your sins, but you need to believe that this part of your redemption it, it's it's yours today. You can walk in in God's peace, man. Uh, your your heart's so full of of and wrought up like like Martha was. She was troubled and worried about many things. And yet Mary chose the good part. Mary, Mary chose intimacy with Jesus. And Mary had been serving, so it wasn't like Mary 
Uh, Martha said, you know, tell Mary to come help me. She's left me. Uh, she's left serving to, to spend time at your feet. Well, so Mary had been serving and Martha had been sitting at Jesus' feet, but she didn't let the Word of God, she didn't place the Word of God in her relationship with Jesus as a priority. And you know, we've been teaching on a prosperous soul and a, pro a prosperous soul has got to enter into rest. Man, G G the, the Father uh, in, gave us the, this great psalm uh, in, Proverbs, uh, in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, I'll, he, he, I'll, he leads me by the still waters. You know, he, he brings me in, and makes me lay, lie down in green pastures. Man, God's, God's got really, really good uh, rest for you, peace for you. Well, you've been try, what you've been trying to do is to, you've been trying to uh, find that rest and that peace through entertainment. And you know, there's nothing wrong with entertainment, but it doesn't take the place of coming to Jesus. Uh, I just hear the Lord calling you to Himself, calling you away from distractions, calling you away from the internet, calling you away from your phones. You need to come to Jesus and sit at His feet. And then not just, not just put all of your requests there that you want him to do for you, you need to, you need to receive his heart and mind. And he's ministering, I know, peace to people today. Um, I, I said I was gonna go on with another question, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that right now because Jesus is ministering. The, the Lord is your shepherd. Let, let, me just, let me just read that, Psalm 23. And, and, and just while, as I read this, I want you to put yourself in the place of this psalm. I want, you to, I want you to receive what the Lord has prepared for you today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, when, when you make Him your Lord, and not just, not, not just your Savior, but your Lord, then he, you're not going to be in a place of want. You don't have to worry about your needs being met. He's your shepherd. He's your Lord, he, uh, God is your Father. He loves you. He's going to take care of you. Praise God. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Uh, it's not barren. It's not famine. It's, it's uh, green. It's lush. It's, it's uh, peaceful there. And He leads me beside the still waters, not, not a mind full of confusion and stress and strife. Man, if you're in relationships that are full of strife, you need to pull away from that. And you need to come to Jesus and sit at His feet. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Uh, you're not, listen, He's not leading you into, in, into things that are, that are uh, not uh, beneficial for you. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you're with me. What, what is He saying? Look, even if you're in the midst of a difficult situation, of something that in the natural it seems impossible. Uh, he, he said, you're, you're going to walk through that. You're gonna, he's going to lead you through that. You don't have to fear evil. God's with you. He's with you right now. And it says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That, that's, his, that's His Word. That's His Spirit leading you. They're gonna, he's going to be comforting you. He's going to be ministering to you in the midst of a difficult situation, in the midst of a dark place. And God's going to be ministering to you. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Even, even though you're right in the middle of a dark place, uh, you haven't seen breakthrough yet, He's going to feed you. He's going to speak to you. He's going to minister to you. In fact, that's what He's doing through me right now. You anoint my head with oil. Man, He's going to, he's going to be anointing you Man, He's going to anoint your life and ministry. In the middle of that, you're going to, uh, instead of focusing on yourself, you're going to see that God's got other, there are other people going through this too that do not have the hope that you have. And you're going to reach out to them. 
And he said, my cup runs over. You're not going to be lacking. Man, and you're not, going to, you're not going to lack for what to say or what to do. Wisdom is coming to you in the midst of a dark place. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It's no, there are no boogeymen around, around the corner. Even though you're going through stuff right now, goodness and mercy are there. Good, God's goodness. Man, He has, he has uh, ordained and spoken and crowned your, the, this year with goodness for you. Praise God. And mercy. And even when you've messed up, you know, even when you've failed, even, even when you've made mistakes, His mercy is there for you. You think about, you think about Abraham, uh, and the father of our faith. Man, he messed up royally, and yet God still blessed him. And he, he, didn't, he didn't fully obey God. He had incomplete obedience and only went two-thirds of the way to Haran. He took his family with him, and, and then, then his father passed away, and then he went into the land, and God spoke to him, and this is the land, and then he went on still uh, beyond where God told him to go. And then... And then um, uh, he, he laid his wife's neck on the line. And this is, this is the father of our faith. And God still had mercy on him. And God has mercy on you. Don't, don't be punishing yourself for your mistakes. And if you'll just come to the Lord today, he's got peace for you. He's got mercy for you. He's got hope for you. And it, your cup is going to be running over all the days of your life. And I, it says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Man, God's presence is there with you right now. And if you'll come to Jesus and you'll just lay aside uh, all the strife, lay aside all the turmoil, man, His peace is going to flood your soul right now in Jesus' name. I speak peace and rest to you, my brother and sister, in Jesus' name. I just release the peace of God Man, there's nothing better than to walk in God's peace and to walk in the presence of God and knowing He's with you. He's there with you. You're not alone. You are not alone. Man, God's there with you. And He's going to send help for you. Man, get your focus on the Lord. Don't focus on your lack. Don't focus on the problem. Get your focus on the Lord. And he, you're going to find He's going to deliver you. He's going to show you the way out. There's no temptation that's taken you, uh, but such as is common to man. And God will, with that temptation, make a way of escape. And I'm just speaking to you right now. You enter His rest. He, believe in Him. And believe this is for you. And my brother and sister, listen, the, the thing that you need to understand is that, is that as you enter into His peace, your soul will prosper and then your body will just hatch off and get healed. Right now, as you've entered into His rest, there's healing flood, flooding your body like a river. The healing power of Jesus is being manifest in your body right now. Back pain and shoulder pain is, is, is leaving right now. Someone's had a terrible kind of sciatic thing going on in your neck and... Uh, up and down into your back, and, and the Lord's healing that right now. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that there, there are um, all kinds of eye problems, uh, vision problems being healed. Uh, man, the Lord's uh, causing eyesight to be 2020 in Jesus' name. Floaters are leaving in the name of Jesus. All kinds of Problems with the eyes uh, is is being is being healed. Um, there's someone that's had chronic ear uh, ear aches and ear problems. Uh, right now, the healing power of Jesus is touching that. Praise God, because your soul is prospering. Your soul is is being is is at rest, and so the life that's in your spirit's able to able to manifest. You, someone's being healed of Meniere's disease in Jesus name fibromyalgia is being healed right now Jesus already paid the price for it. I'm just announcing that 
is gone from you in the name of, in the name of Jesus. You're not going to have all those problems. There's someone with severe, uh, you know, kind of environmental uh, issues with uh, all, with uh, severe immune problems and with the environment and and God's restoring you and healing you back to normal in Jesus name man as your soul is just entering into rest you're receiving what God has for you and you're receiving the healing and and and, and prosperity there there's someone that's just been you've been in constant lack in constant lack in constant lack and now there's your cup is running over there's abundance coming to you right now. Just believe that. Believe that the Lord, your shepherd, will cause you not to want anymore. You're not going to live hand to mouth anymore. Father, we just bless you and thank you for all of these things that you're doing. Listen, listen, guys. This all comes. There's so much more that the Lord is doing right now. There's cancers being healed. Hemorrhoids are being healed. In Jesus' name. But there's so much more He will do in you as you daily enter His rest. Get your cares over on the Lord. Uh, receive Jesus as your shepherd that will cause you not to want, that will make you lie down in green pastures. I bless you today in Jesus' name with a prosperous soul. Thanks so much for tuning in to Wisdom for Living and joining us on this Ministry Friday. Discover the key to a life of health and prosperity when you read Greg's book, A Prosperous Soul. In this book, you will learn biblical truths that will help bring freedom to your life. Get your copy of Greg's new book by going to gregmore.com today. Today's teaching, A Prosperous Soul, is also available in a five-part CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive containing both audio and video. Go to gregmore.com and order your copy today. Man, if you've been blessed today through our uh, ministry Friday, I I'd love to hear your testimonies. Let me know what God has spoken to you, how he's ministered to you. Uh, this is a great family here with Greg Moore Ministries and, and uh, Wisdom for Living. And so just go to gregmore.com, email me, I'd love to hear from you. God bless you. On our website, you'll find Greg's latest book release, free teachings, as well as many other resources. You'll be able to access his blogs, quotes of wisdom, and funnies of the week. While there, please connect with us and let us know how you or a loved one has been blessed by this ministry. We'd love to hear from you. If you've been blessed by today's teaching, we would like you to consider partnering with Greg Moore Ministries. Your partnership will help expand this broadcast around the world to give people the opportunity to grow in wisdom, Christ-likeness, and grace. Go to gregmore.com and become a partner today. You can order resources or partner with our ministry at gregmore.com or by writing to us at P.O. Box 7702, Woodland Park, Colorado, 80863. We look forward to hearing from you today.